Welcome, everybody. Trust and believe. Today, I have a great episode, an exciting episode, potentially life-changing episode. I'll be interviewing one of my former future soldiers, as you can see here in the thumbnail. Her unique story is coming up next after the break. Stay tuned, stay locked. Let's say it all together. Trust and believe. Trust and believe you are tuned into episode 126 of the Nomad Cast. I'm your host, Mr. Anderson, and I have a special guest today, one of my future soldiers, the many, many, many future soldiers I've had over the time I was a recruiter in the Army. Um, but this future soldier here, she, was, she has the distinction of being my very first future soldier because I took over the program from another recruiter. That's another story. And she was like one of the first ones. She was like, hey, Staff Sergeant Anderson, I'm here. I'm like, okay, all right. Next thing I know, it's like 800 of other future soldiers. So it was a great time, great time. But definitely I uh, want to introduce this Army veteran. Miss Short is in the building. What's up, Miss Short? <laughs> what up, what up? <laughs> <laughs> what, you had some laughing juice this morning or something? Oh, my God. It's called sleep deprivation. <laughs> <laughs> So how yeah. you been doing? I I've been cool. I mean, I've been busy. Yeah. Um, well, that's a that's a good problem to have. <laughs> says the retired one. Got it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah it's a good know. problem to have. Um, finished. I just finished school certification. So okay. That was another project. I get to see my niece twenty four seven. Uh, living in Cali. So yeah, it's been the last two. Wow, well, the last several years have been a roller coaster. We'll definitely dive into that. So let's go ahead and get started. You ready to get started? Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about, and, and most of this stuff I already know because, you know, you was in the Future Soldier program. <laughs> but let's talk about your upbringing. What was your upbringing like? Wow. Living in Detroit, as you know. I mean, yeah. be home before the streetlight. Where you going? What you doing? Who you riding with? What time you coming back? Where they live at? What's the phone number? <laughs> um... No, you can't have a cell phone yet. Uh, no, go to bed. Where's your homework at? So you already know. <laughs> Parents yeah. didn't play. Parents were about the homework. So, um, you know, graduated high school, kept my nose clean, played sports, moved out, went down to Nashville, Tennessee for college. Mm -hmm. Got a partial scholarship band or marching, uh, partial scholarship uh, to March down there at Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. Um, so graduated, fast forward to going back home and going, man, what am I about to do? I got student loans. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> help is, and, like Country Wayne say, help is on the way. Yeah, yeah basically. And I, <laughs> and I knew I had wanted to be in the military because originally I had the Navy after me mm -hmm. for, you know, majoring in French. And I was like, no, nah, because the time, at that time in the 90s, you know, big war going on. So. Right. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Um, no, nah, um, nah, I'm not going to go. So mm -hmm. graduated, and I'm like, you know what? It was always in my back pocket to be in the military. But then in the same token, I had to consider my age at that time. So I'm like, man, what am I about to do? Am I going to do this? Am I going to go full active? Am I going to go reserve? Am I going to go National Guard? Like, mm -hmm. ah. So parents, my dad was okay with it. My mom, on the other hand, as you know, I told, she's kind of skeptical. So, you know, I really thought hard and long about it. And I was like, hey, I got to do something. Yeah. So, you know, going forward, and I had to search out a recruiter, recruiting office, you know, and then I came across the Detroit Recruiting Station. And I, you know, hands down, that's fam. That's always going to be fam. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then I came across, you know, said certain individual retired master sergeant. Hey. <clears throat> <laughs> Go ahead and throw that disclaimer right there real quick. Clear for and retired exercise. <laughs> I mean, you know, he got upgraded for real, but you know, had yeah. a soft on. Appreciate and you know, we talked it up, chopped it up, and you know, I knew I was on the timetable because I'm, I was in my thirties. I'm like, yep. crap, you know, I'm like, what I got to do? What I got to do? You know, what I got to do? What I got to lose? Like, what? 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 Mm -hmm. I knew at this point my mind was made up. So. Yeah, I came to Future Social Program, and as you said, it, it, it matriculated to a bunch of us in, in this lovely black van um, with tinted out windows, like not a tenant. 
Um, yeah, it was, it was really, honestly, if I had to do it over again, I would do it because I had so much fun. Yeah. And you pushed us to do what we needed to do. So, you know, I give, I give the recruit station much respect. Appreciate it. And, um, yeah, it was pretty much, my mind was made up. Let's go. Let's do it. And then, of course, you know, as that test, I'm like, oh, crap. Um, I got to take the test. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you got to take the test. I was like, crap. So it's not just coming in. And I know we used to raid the back the back storage closet of the office with goodies. Yeah. We, we were bad for that. We, we were bad. I can't, can't lie. We, we because kids. when you, I mean, to cut you off, because when you, when I, when I got assigned to that recruiting station, uh-huh. I was at the eight mile office, and if I remember, yeah. didn't you get recruited out the downtown station or the eight mile office? Uh, I wouldn't say I was at the eight, no, it was the eight mile office because it was Sergi, Summerell, Smith, you. Um, I feel like I'm missing somebody. Uh, probably am. Yeah, there's a bunch of NCOs in there, and it was right across the way from what used to be that. I think a it was. I know the movie theater was over there. Like, there Bel-Air. was like another big store over there. Bel-Air. There it is. Bel-Air. Um, and yeah, we were always coming in, raiding the back closet for t-shirts, water bottles, wristbands. <laughs> we were, we yeah. were cleaning house. Yeah, um, it was. We didn't, you know, even though we hadn't shipped yet, we hadn't really signed. <laughs> we just wanted, we wanted the gear. Because your, 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 the first future soldier manner that that you had, it was a female. Wasn't it a female oh, staff oh, yes, sergeant? Yes, yes, it was. It was. It was. I was downtown first. You are yep, right. Yep. It was a female um, staff sergeant that was there. And if oh, I remember, I mean, this shit, this been almost, what, 10 years yeah, ago? Yeah. She, she ended up PCS, and I remember the station commander was like, hey, we need a future soldier manager. Do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I, 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 I enjoyed the recruiting aspect, but to be the, you know, when I volunteered to be that future soldier manager in that recruiting station, now it's like, okay, staff, at the staff sergeant at the time, I could be hands on with the with the future yeah. soldiers, almost like the troops again. You know what I mean? So it was definitely <laughs> I mean, great like, for me. And when we I didn't become the troops. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell yeah. you, uh, <laughs> that's another story. But I tell you, it was um, just for me, and I told uh, Jazz this in her interview. That was it was almost like the military children. You know what I'm saying? The soldiers were like my children in a sense, because I mean it was constant future soldier training. Even you was one yeah. of the ones like jazz. Even if we didn't have future soldier training, it was like, okay, well, can I come to the station? Can I do this? And the only time you guys didn't want to attend future soldier training, got a job, doctor's appointment, some mm-hmm. of those things. But it you you guys would was the ones that was like actively engaged. Cause some of them yeah. future soldiers, I would call, hey, training man, I'm getting ready to come to your house. Oh, oh, I'm at my uh, cousin's house on uh, he on the east side. So I'm like, okay, this cat is not serious, but you guys were definitely serious. <laughs> we were. So as a leader, hey, we I would definitely appreciate up. that. Absolutely, we were. I don't care how dog tired I was or from getting beat the next the previous day from training. I was yep. up and out the door. Um, and my parents knew it, and at that point, once they saw how bad I wanted it, it was like, okay, we can't stop her from doing this. She wants to do this. Oh, and I get they were nervous and scared, and I, I understand it wholeheartedly. And my mom was like, are you sure this is what you want to do? Like, yeah. yep. It's always Let's... been on my list, and I was like, I'm not about to stop. And yeah, it, Jazz, oh, McCall was with us too. Yeah. Yeah, yep, definitely. I remember. And that. I still talk to her. We actually ended up in Germany together. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yep. Yep. Wow. Small world for her. For we really world. ended up in Germany. And Anderson ended up in Germany too for a good minute. Yeah, I heard. Mm-hmm. I heard. We let me backtrack just to just let me backtrack just a second. I want to go back to Tennessee State is where you went. Ah, my big blue. I'm a what boy, was it? Buddy. What was that moment for those of us that didn't experience it? What was oh, that wow. HBCU life like? Ooh. What was that like from the study to the social life, everything? What was that life like? Honestly, 
to be honest, I wanted to grow up. All I knew was the University of Michigan. Go blue. And my parents were there. Go you know, so that's all I knew. So at that time, my high school band director was like, hey, I will get you a full ride to the University of Michigan. I thought about it like, dang, for real? Like, you know, I was like, I, you know, I thought about parents with the University of Michigan. Okay. I played in their band. Yeah. A, high, a lot of us high school students got to play in their band over the summer, which is cool and epic. But I thought about it. University of Michigan is not me. Yeah. It's, it's not. It's too big. Yeah. I wouldn't have a car. I, so many students. I'm just like, nah, that's not where I really want to go. Do I regret it to a certain extent? Mm, mm, a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I said, nah, I'm, I went on a college tour. That was a big thing back then growing up. Yeah. High school went on a college tour. Yep. Yep. So we went all around the South, Jackson State, Kentucky State, you know, you name it. Mm-hmm. And I came, went to college tour, landed me at TSU. And I said, okay. Not too big of a school. I knew right. I didn't have a car. I had to keep that in mind. Everything yeah. was right on campus. I said, okay. Right. And then we went to play in um, All City Band in, in Detroit. Mm-hmm. And that's how I ended up with that partial band scholarship to TSU. Right. And I said, okay, let me think about it. Do I want Jackson State, TSU, Louisiana State? Like, I was all over the board. I didn't know where I wanted to go. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Some, something about TSU. Yeah. So the HBCU life, if any kids out there want to try, I would say give it a try because it is completely different. You can't, you have, it does give you that open window to mess up because you're round partying and clubs, you name it. But, but when you're around your own, mm, yeah, I don't want to say this. <laughs> Think about it. When you're around your own family, we'll say that. <laughs> yeah. It's a different vibe. Um, you know, it, it's such a great feeling. And then when you walk across the stage and say, hey, I graduated from HBCU school. Right. Especially how known TSU is, they actually win the Rose Bowl parade over here. Yeah, my marching band was. So you know, to be part of that, I wasn't part of that, but being I played in the band, but being known for that school you went to, knowing that you played in a band that's known worldwide, and you can wear your T-shirt anywhere. Hey, you went to Tennessee State University? Right. Yeah, sure it is. Right. And right. I wouldn't change it for the world. I I, I miss Mama. I miss the school. Um, but that's my that's my big blue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and their colors were blue, so <laughs> yeah, it was. How far is Tennessee State from Nashville? And did you go out oh, in Nashville? Right in Nashville. Or not? It's, it's right, right in Nashville. In Nashville. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is right in right on the heart of Nashville. So um, you can't miss it. You, you'll find so much TSU gear in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, especially with homecoming coming up. Mm, was it October the eighth? So right. if you really want to get a taste of a football game, an HBCU game, homecoming, go to TSU. Not right. saying take it away from any of the HBCU schools. No, I, I got you. I got you. Yeah, because the folks at Jackson State, the folks at Grambling, they will say the same sure. thing. You know what I mean? They, so. Everybody say the same thing. Yeah. Lane, Jackson State, Fam, yeah. Alabama State. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Grambling, Southern, the whole Southern, everybody in that uh-huh. Southern Bill area will say, hey, come to homecoming. Yeah. Forget any other games unless it's an HCCU school. Uh-huh. If it is, if they're playing, go. Yeah. Because I promise you, it, it it's a party. Yeah. It is. And I'm sure, and you probably can say this better than anybody, a lot of folks probably party too much in Nashville and then do anything in, in, in the classroom, so. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and raise my hand. I was guilty one semester. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let me clear my throat. But yeah, <laughs> you know, you you can't help it. It, it yeah. was one of those 18, 19. You're down there. And you just you get wrapped up. And you yeah. don't realize it until after the fact. Yeah. And then we were like, oh crap! I just beat up. And um, yeah, yeah. I had messed up my spring semester because uh-huh. I was too busy out there kicking in and just enjoying life yeah and i i paid for it yeah so you know i was a lesson learned i mean i said okay yeah i screwed up so let's go ahead and redo this so much back home 
But you know, you it's know. you know, it, it, of course, during the time we don't think about it. But as we mm -hmm. grow and we mature, we become more responsible. We can look yeah. back five years, 10, 15. And like you said, yeah, of course, you want to go to Michigan. All of us that grew up in Detroit, we, you know, mm -hmm. we want to go to Michigan. But then you think about your life. It's like when that door is shut, the window of opportunity opens. You know right. what I mean? So your opportunity was Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. And seeing how you're speaking about it, HBCU, there's something significant about that. It is. It's you know? a different. It's you can't. I honestly can't put a word on it except you have to go try it. Yeah. You just have yeah. to. I mean, if you decide to transfer, completely understandable. Right. But if you get opportunity to go on it, I would say if anything first, if you want to see what it's like, go take the college tour. Mm -hmm. Find a local area that's offering a college tour go take it and they'll tell you the schools that they're going to uh -huh. and just go down and you kind of get a taste of it then you can say okay hey you know what mm -hmm. all right it is something for me or it's not for me so and that is something that that is something that me as mrs anderson <clears throat> you know want to drive particularly our son because he's getting ready to start high school our daughter already graduated mm -hmm. college um and we kind of drive him to that, hey, you know, if you don't want to do X, Y, and Z, there's right. this HBCU. The other universities are great. Again, I'm, you know, we're Michigan people. Love University <laughs> of Michigan. But there is something yeah. to the point where you go to one of those historically black colleges. You know, it's something, like you say, when you, you see these guys and gals all the time, when they go into the mall, they got the uh -huh. hat on, they got the jacket on. There's a certain kindred spirit about going to those type of schools. You know what I mean? We may crack jokes and talk, you know, sugar honey iced tea about each yeah, other, yeah, yeah. but at yep. the end of the same day, you know, it's an HBCU family. And I don't know if you've caught it now, but a lot of the NBA players are getting back to HBCU. They are. Because a lot of they the athletes are. that are in those professional sports come from HBCU school. Yeah, they are. Not the big team, your big 12. Yeah. They're yeah, seeing the HBCUs are seeing unprecedented momentum as it relates to investing Correct. partnerships from you know Fortune 500 companies who 20 years ago wouldn't even look at them. Right. But now exactly. it's it, but recruited. now it's cool. Now it's cool to shake hands with the HBCU. Uh -huh. You understand? So. Exactly. And that and that to me that's respect on a whole nother page. So I was say, if you yeah. get a chance, if you. Have him go see it, like you said. Yeah. You know, give him that option and let him go. Okay, you know what? All right. <laughs> yeah, trust and believe that. All right. So we talked about the HBCU because I definitely wanted to touch on that, and you, you right. touched a little bit on uh, your enlistment process in the army. Now that's done. Take us to basic training Ooh. and subsequent <laughs> uh, first duty station. So let's talk about your experience. Basic oh, training, wow. as soon as you got off that bus. Woo, okay. So before I left, it was a choice of being a 12 November or a cook. So yep. I told 12 November. Uh -huh. um, and it was time to go to the hotel, time to ship, nervousness, stomach, <laughs> you can't eat nothing. Yeah. It's just, ah. So at that point, you at the airport, you got the big old yellow folder in your hand. It's about six or seven of y'all yeah. together. You look obvious as all get out because you walk around with a big yellow folder. You got a backpack on your back. Yeah. You really ain't got no suitcase. <laughs> you really nothing. <laughs> you got a backpack. That's about it. You may have a suitcase. Well, other than that, yeah. So off to Fort Sill we go, or you know what I call Fort AT Double Hockey Six so we home on because yeah, you, and, you, and, yeah. you and like ninety eight percent of the people that's ever been there. Yeah, yeah, it was hot, <laughs> and you get off the man, you're on the plane, you get on the bus, and you sit there like, ah, oh, oh boy, yeah, it's starting to sink in for real now. And yeah, it, it they got the drill sergeant got on the bus full bull at us. Da -da -da -da, get off the yeah. bus, and you're like, ah. Oh, <laughs> I'm yeah. like, what did I just sign up for? <laughs> and it was crazy, like it was crazy because it was like you you know what's coming, but right. it just hits you like boom. Hey y'all better don't be that, don't be that. So everybody's trying to just dump the luggage. 
or whatever they had, you know, because you, you have a list of stuff you can bring. So you yeah. packed all of this, you dump your stuff, you have flying, you look like you about to go to somebody's correctional facility because we all <laughs> land up with these big old bags. Uh huh. Like, what what did we just sign up for? And, um, you know, we all get separated, all the females, all the males get separated, get meds checked, all your stuff being checked in, making sure you're good to go. And then you finally, you know, fast forward to get to your, or your um, barracks or <laughs> going wherever they want to call it. And, mm -hmm. and it, it's like you starting off writing in there day one. Like, change clothes, here's your uniform, blah, 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 you get into the booth, here's your Kevlar, here's your uh, everything. Yep. Your um, boots, now trying on the boots, yeah, oh, Jesus, no. Um, uniform, hat, PT clothes, um, winter PT stuff, summer PT stuff, like you get stuff just thrown at you. And you you got to hurry up because they, they're literally making you do this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was crazy that you get your shots and all that. Yeah. So, I mean, it was pretty much like this nonstop every single day. Um, you go to sleep at a certain time. I mean, going through going through the um, the cafeteria is, is like this. Yeah. You don't have but like two point five seconds to wolf down as much food as you can. And that's all by design, to too. Now, that's I can get hurry, yeah. get hurry, hurry, hurry up away. Get yeah, going it's now. It's <laughs> all, all by design. And you know, you have a certain area where you have to sit at because one, you still on an actual base that are actual, you know, people who are stationed there. So you have to sit in a certain area or a certain spot of the cafeteria. You'll start to sit somewhere. You got to hurry up and bust the table. You got somebody to say, hey, look, y'all, we got two steps of prayer up and finish. Like, for real, we got to go. <laughs> um, like, still serious. Like, you got everybody looking at their watch. Um, it was crazy. So, I mean, you got, wow, where do I start? <laughs> Rough marches, learn how to qualify on either AR-15 or 249, 203, PT test, um, learning about the AR-15s, um, grenade launch, uh, grenade Y'all were throwing. shooting AR-15s or M-16s? Um, at that time, I had an, no, I had an M-16. What about to say, you ain't shooting no AR-15s. Yeah. We had M-16. I didn't get, I got an M-4 when I got to Germany. So, yep. the AR, the, the light of the one that I had was just it didn't have the adjustable bus stock, so you can imagine a bus stock about this long going in your shoulder was not working when you had to have your um Kevlar and everything on, it was not comfortable. Then you ruck marching with it, the um, it was crazy. You're getting woken up at night, you had to stay awake for 24 hours because you had to do fire guard, and that was that was a mind test, like in all seriousness, because you're not used to being up. You gotta stay up 24 hours. Yeah, it's all bad. <laughs> um, you, you, you know the, the famous thing is that because we had a drill sergeant who was all about like that job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like she was sure, but she will let you know. Right. And I, we could all we would always tease her after the fact, of course. Uh -huh. She's like, oh, oh total line, pride, total line, total line, pride. Hurry up! Is she in a pen? Nine, eight. We're like, oh god, what the, did we do now? Like, yeah, yeah. What? and I'm sitting there going, why are we in trouble now? Why are we getting woken up? Why are we standing out here in the middle of the floor? It's cold as all get out. What do we do? And don't yeah. forget, you, don't forget your weapon on your bed too. Yeah, go bring that too. And it was crazy because it was a group of us, ironically, that were in our thirties that were there at base together. So we had our little powwow. It's like, man, what the. Are we doing? Like, Wait, what were, is this? were you guys since you guys were part of that older crowd and i know majority of them folks 18 19 20 mm -hmm. and some of the folks the the, the fellow um recruits that was there did they kind of look at y'all as the elders of the platoon they did honestly but you should mention that my drill sergeant drill sergeant walker wow i still remember his name to this day mm -hmm. um he actually pulled me to the side one day. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like, Pratt, how old are you? I, um, just started on 33, 30, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? I uh -huh. said, you know, Joe Sergeant, good question. I had a goal and I was determined to do it. Then I had another Joe Sergeant. We were doing um, 
shooting uh, qualifications down like the little range where you have like to shoot, uh, uh, fire a certain target. Uh huh. And it happened to be muddy, and I fell. And so he pulled me to the side for a minute to get myself right. And he was like, "Come here, Fred. Move when you're started. I mean, you got to move." Yeah. And he was like, "Your face says it all." I was like, "What you mean, just like?" <laughs> He was like, your face is like, what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't do nothing but laugh because yeah. he was he was, he was, was on point with it. We fell out laughing. I said, real sorry, you know what? You're right. right. He was like, keep doing what you're doing, Pratt. Yeah. So clean your weapon, get yourself back out there. Okay. Yeah. And to me, I feel like I earned the respect of the drill sergeant because right. I kept my nose clean. Yeah. I was never in trouble. Yeah. Um, never was late. Always like, hey, y'all, look, we we got to keep our ish together because yep. I'm tired of calling the line at two or three o'clock in the morning and going out to the platform two or three o'clock in the morning because somebody done did something yeah. stupid. Yeah. So you know, but would I do it over again with my uh, platoon that I was in? Oh yes. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Those are those in moments, and the reason I asked you. um your whole basic training experience because you know i was a prior service marine so i never had the opportunity to go to <laughs> army basic training because once you're a prior service marine you don't have to you go straight to well in my case i went straight to dag on fort jackson for two weeks to get shots and uniforms oh, and then man. i was in germany so I, i've always wondered i've seen it on youtube and everything but i always mm-hmm. wondered what it was like going through army basic training because again it, i don't have that opportunity because my you know it it is what it is my boot camp was a little different <laughs> a little different from what the army provides but you know the army was great so i the things i like out of it i couldn't stand a grenade throwing that drove me yeah nuts. yeah um i couldn't stand a long march that we had to do because we are in full battle rattle with our right. weapons in the back side right I did like the obstacle course. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Um, because that really pushed me. Um, now the tower, um, yeah, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I mean, because you never repel before. So you up yeah. here, if you got somebody at the bottom of your rope that you have to trust. And you look at like, okay, check this out. If you let me go down, <laughs> and I fall, <laughs> man. So, and it was cool that I'm looking, they was like, swing your leg over. I'm like, are you sure about this? <laughs> I, and the person who had at the bottom of my rope, right. he was already in trouble. Uh-huh. So I'm like, man, look, okay. All right, it's already right. shaky. I'm, I'm going to swing on down and I'm going to push off a repel. And once you finally touch the wall and you're sitting there with this rope like this, you're like, okay, you know what? Let's just go. Push, go, go, mm-hmm. get it down. And I was good with it. And the rope course was fun. Um, that part I'll do over, but overall, it made me a tougher person. And then it came time, pretty much graduation, you got the long march. That was atrocious, PT test constantly. Um, yep. We had an incident where another soldier left her weapon on the bus. So you can imagine getting woken up at old dark 30 and somebody oh, that's in the morning. It's always fun if you're the, the NCO Ooh. that finds it. It's always oh, fun. Yeah. yeah, we were like, "You did what? You left? Yeah. Oh, damn. we about to be in trouble." <laughs> um, I would, I would do it all over again because I, for me, earning the respect of the drill sergeant meant a lot. Yeah, that I, I, I would, if I could go back and have them again, and have the platoon I was in, because yeah, McCool, all we were there, we were all into like, man, this is crazy. Yeah. So it was fun, and it came time graduation, pick your duty station. I'm like, ah, okay, where am I going? Mm-hmm. So at the time, it was Germany, Japan. I think some I forgot what was stateside. I had like four or five cho- choices, but that would have, that actually fast forward. Sorry, excuse me, part. That's when we ended up going to AIT in uh, Fort Lostonwood. Right. And that was right. a whole another adventure in itself in that atrocious field that you gotta run and march up. No. Mm-hmm. Um that's a whole nother entity because now you're taking classes learning how to operate this huge equipment yep. that you have never touched. So you're talking about dozers, high backhoe loaders, graders, scrapers, 
what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what am I doing? Did I make a mistake and not be a cut? What, what is this? So yeah, that was, and you were test, you had you had quizzes. Yep. And if you did not pass them or pass your PT test, you were re- um you were held back. And that was scary too. And that was the same thing in basic training. If you didn't pass your PT test, you were gonna get held back. So yep. or, re- or how they call it, recycled. Yep. Um. So that was a venture in itself. And I hurt myself. And, you know, McCool, and I got to give McCool mad props. Mm-hmm. The last PT test, because I failed one because of my time running, and my knee was twisted up. She yeah. was at the end of that line. Run, short, run. Yeah. And I was like, um, <laughs> and it hurt so bad. But I had to give McCool. But that uh, motivation. That's what it was. And that and that's the camaraderie that I respect that we had coming out of Detroit. Yeah. We pushed each other. Yeah. And if I you know, if I could have went with everybody who we had during future training together, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> it had been a whole other story. That was um, a that was a good time. It was. It was it, it I miss it though, you know, overall I miss going to the range. Yeah. I miss the obstacle course. Yeah. I don't miss the PC. Well, some of the PC tests I don't mind. Right. Um, I miss the uniforms because I still have all of mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, getting stationed, you know, Germany. Okay, I'm about to go across the ocean. Oh, man. Um, am I ready for this for real? Germany is a whole nother breed. Where was you <laughs> Where was you at in Germany? Um, I was in Schweinfurt, Germany. Okay. Before they closed that station down and moved us to Graf. Schweinfurt, I remember, because I was in Hanau. And I think Hanau was, was probably closed when you went. Mm-hmm. They actually ended up closing Schweinfurt completely down. Yeah. Like, it's gone. I was in, and, yeah, I was in Hanau from, we were in Hanau from 99 to 02, and we used to go to the field in Schweinfurt. Oh, and well, I no. remember them freaking pigs and all this other, <laughs> and it was like, yeah, it's the home of the pigs and. Oh, yeah, because, yeah. I mean, right down the way, there are houses, like, literally yep. right off post, no matter which gate you go out, you yep. got the off post housing, and then you got houses, and yep. all these open, huge fields. So, uh-huh. Germany, I would love to go back. Yeah. On my own. I mean, we got in trouble there. I got tired. I'm like, oh, my God. I feel like I'm in basic training again. We stand in formation and cussed out by our heart sergeant. Yeah. <laughs> like... What are we doing <laughs> all over again? Like, seriously? And, you know, and I had a pursuit with all, all, pretty much majority of males. So, what was that, that experience that, like? Oh, wow. It's a different feel when one, you're a female coming in older than everybody that's in your company, that's in your platoon. Right. Two, you got a platoon that's majority of all males. So, it's, it was very few males and very few females within that entire company. Yeah. But that's okay. Make it do what it do. Right. And I literally had to prove myself that you're not going to, one, run me away. Two, you're going to respect me like I respect you. We both got the same rank on our chest. Now, granted, you may be in here longer than me, but what you're not going to do? Right. <laughs> nah. Right. Cause I will take this. You said what? Now? <laughs> <laughs> Detroit will come out. Like I was so yeah. serious. Like it, it, it got like that a couple times. I was just like, this is crazy. I'm like I'm not ready to go home. Like yeah. I'm sorry. Can I get? Can I transfer something? What do I got to do? Yeah. And I literally had to prove myself to them to earn for them to respect me for, for me to respect them. And it was, it, once it finally got going, my platoon sergeant, who is also retired too, mm-hmm. I say, I was a sergeant first class Alexander, much respect for him too. Mm-hmm. He was like the dad of the platoon. Right. <laughs> yep. Um, and my NCOs at the time, you know, it got to the point of where I got treated as an E5, yeah. even though I wasn't. Right. That's how much respect they laid on me. I'm talking about doing counseling. Stuff. Yeah. Creating folders, you know, I didn't, didn't go to anybody's board. Yeah. Nothing like that, you know. Um, at that point, my PT was doing a two and a half mile walk. Mm-hmm. And that right there is a lot brutal than actually running. It is. It is. It is brutal. People don't realize that. That oh, two no. and a half, <laughs> and you got to be moving. There's no stopping. 
You got oh. to keep moving. And your feet must look like you're actually walking. Do not lift your feet off. Yep. Your first if it does look like you're running, you're done. Like, yep. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And that was a shin fire. Oh my God. What yes. <laughs> Woo. And everybody now, I'm like, why do you walk so fast? I'm sorry. I'm used to doing a two and a half mile walk when I was in the military. So yeah. it's just kind of natural. I'm going to walk yeah. And yep. it. You know, it, Germany was his own entity. You know, you're PCSing the, or, uh, uh, these big trucks and you got to drive stuff and you going on into the field and shooting and throwing the maids all over again. Gas chamber, not doing your, that again. Your unit that you were in, in in Germany, did you guys go to the field a lot? We did. However, I got held back for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I really don't know why a lot of the times, but it's okay though. I'm not knocking it. Yeah. But majority of times, yeah, I did go to the field once. Um, but the second time around, I think it was during the winter, they went to the field and I got held back. I don't mm -hmm. know. I think, I don't know if it was because of PT test or something else, but they kept a lot of us back. Right. And that was fine because we yeah. still did stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we still went to the range. Um, we still, you know, got, we still had to do long marches. So we, had to yeah. do one. I forgot. I think it was, oh, Jesus, a good 20 plus miles, something like that. Yeah. And then your rucksack had to be packed with a lot of heavy weights. So mm -hmm. at that point, there was like, are you sure you about to? Everybody had their doubts again. Sure, you about to go do this ruck march? I am. Yeah. You, I am. Just so y'all will leave me alone. I'm going to go do it. Yep. I'm going to prove to y'all. My knee is jacked up. Granted, but I'm still going to do this ruck march. Yep. And I finished it. A lot faster and still got more respect from the NCOs again. Yeah. I'm like, sort you, you, man, okay. See, I told y'all, I may be busted up, but I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm a muster through the pain. And that's one of the things the Army military has taught me to be, it gives you so much more tougher skin, pain and all. It, it, it makes you more resilient. It does. Where a lot of times, you know, not saying, you know, the lifestyle that we led, led we we're better than people, mm -hmm. but. It teaches you to be more resilient because Correct. you got your subordinates looking at you, you got your seniors mm -hmm. looking at you, and you got Correct. your peers looking at you. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's and I got back. Yeah, granted, I sat my butt down so quick because that ruck off was like <laughs> <laughs> But the task was completed. It was executed. Absolutely. That's absolutely. That's and yeah. And I felt it in my knee, but I said, you know what, Tony, you did what you came to do. Yeah. Um, the only, there are some things that I didn't like in, was in dealing with AR 670-1. Yeah. Uh, that yes. I, you're right, when it came to the taping, um, that's when we started to, you know, have a that, forehead war. <laughs> that is currently right now, and I've been retired for almost two years, but, you know, just kind of seeing some of the tea leaves and things that I see and read mm -hmm. here, they're either modifying or changing it, because... Even when I was in, it was, I always thought about it, and it was just me. It's an antiquated way to determine body fat. It's yeah. antiquated because you've, if you, and you've seen this scale. At age 25, female 5'10, you should weigh this. Male, Correct. six feet, he weighs 230, you should be this. And, you know, we all grow up. The Samoans, <laughs> black, white. Whatever we are, we all grow up differently. Our, our body composition is different. But, you know, they they, right. they introduced this doctrine way back in the day before we all were all born. Hey, y'all need to look like this. Well, I can't right. be five, nine, seven pounds. I can't do that. So Yeah, they wanted you pretty much, you know, like this big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And... It was crazy because I had never failed a PT test except for, actually, no, I think about Fort Linwood basic trip. Yeah. I maybe, yeah, two, got to Germany. I think that was like two PT tests, something like that. And then, of course, it came to the whole height, weight, and tape. Yep. And, you know, being in a unit where you didn't have a lot of female NCOs was yeah. a problem. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. So I had to get um, a buddy, not a buddy, to come in there with me. Yep. So I can get taped by, you know, a high ranking NCL where, you know, I can't sit up here and argue with him about the taping, but I'm just like, all right, this is crazy. Cause I know that's not where that tape is supposed to go. 
So that became a problem. Yep. And it was getting super frustrated. And I said, no, I want a female NCO to pay me. I'm yeah. sorry, this is crazy. Like, no, nope, per AR671, I can request a female NCO to pay me. So I want a female NCO. Yep. So it got to the point where they wouldn't let her take me anymore. I'm like, why? <laughs> Are you serious right now? Per the regulation says I can have a female NCO. Yeah. Like, that became a problem. And it matriculated. It just started to go. I started not to be happy. Right. I was. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, so now I'm putting in, and now I'm being placed into a little PT program because I felt height, weight, and tape. Mind you, now I had passed my PT test. Like, there was no. Yeah. Oh, okay, team pass or PT. No, I passed my PT test. Yeah. The problem is that because I felt, you know, height, weight, and tape, et cetera, et cetera, but I'm still coming in to do my job, but you're still treating me as an E5. Right. So I'm like, make it make sense. Yeah. You know, you got me waking up soldiers in the morning. I got to get up early to go wake up because to, these yeah. seals aren't coming over. So, you know, and I was like, this is crazy. Like, I'm really not feeling this anymore. And fast forward to, um, I didn't, you know, they give you three chances to make high weight and tape. And mm-hmm. I unfortunately did not the last time around. And it was like, unless you have a medical issue, then you, you'll probably get chaptered out. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got my medical stuff together. Had to go to the, the big, the big battalion commander. I everybody like I had to literally go up the ladder here. And I was like, okay. And I said, I knew it was a 50 50 chance. I here's my case. My um, soon as I had time, I hate short. Regardless of what happened, you did what you came here to do. Yeah. I respect you. You know, nobody can. Yeah. He gave me a good pep talk. Yeah. And I said, I know you know what it is. What it is. If they don't buy my medical stuff, hey. Yeah. It is what it is. I did. Yep. I came over. I completed basic training. PDIT. I got over here. Cool with it. Yep. So I do miss a lot of my peers on the journey. I do. Yeah. Um, but do I miss a lot of the bureaucracy behind it? Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I don't. That's... Um, and then it's crazy. Um, and then fast forward to me getting a letter in the mail saying, hey, you know, you didn't complete your contract. Do you want to come back and reenlist? Mm, no. <laughs> I'm good. Because I had to think about it. Like, real talk. Do I really want to sit up here and deal with AR670-1? <laughs> like, seriously, I had to really think about it. Like, yeah. then my recall, well, what's your recall? Well, we'll have somebody contact you. Okay. Do you think I ever got a phone call? No. So... At this point, right now, you're chaptered out, correct? Yep. So I remember when I interviewed uh, Hutcherson, Miss Jazz, she was saying her exit from the army was worse than her entry into the army. So let's Ooh. talk about your exit. What was your exit Ooh. like from the <laughs> army? Hutch probably nailed that one, like yeah. real, real, real fast. I mean, a lot of my peers are like, oh my God, like you're about, they're about to put you out. Like they're putting you out and they still got people who've done way worse than you. Like, right. I, you know, like got in trouble for, you know, doing stupid stuff and had to go do extra duty and they were still there. So a lot of people were really shocked. My NCOs were really, um, they were really supportive. There were some I was just like, okay, I can really, mm. yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> But for the most part, you know, my platoon was like, you know, hey, even my first sergeant, you know, he was like, you know what, despite everything, I wish I could have the magic power to keep you to stay. Yeah. You know, and I respect him wholeheartedly. And I said, you know what, it's cool. I get it. Mm-hmm. You know, I fought it. I knew the outcome was 50-50. Right. More like 60, no, I'd say 80-20. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it was, it was kind of a bland kind of exit more or less it was kind of like okay mm, do i really believe everything that they're telling me about how how they feel about me before i leave out of here right. Nah. right so some yes because some i keep in contact with mm. i was like my platoon started he's retired i asked him for a recommendation hey can you send me <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's yeah, all like, about no. those building those building and correct. sustaining those relationships mm-hmm. correct and you know hands down he will send me a recommendation hey can i do can i put you down cool yeah. And um there was one who 
I I feel like he backboned me because he was the one taking me to that whole meeting and what he put, I feel like kind of sealed the nail in the coffin. And when I read it, I was like, gotcha. what? Okay, you know what? He an NCO, I can't, I can't go toe to toe with him mm-hmm. like that. It, you know what? Fine. So it was rough. You know, I cried because I felt some type of way like, wow, you know, yeah. for real. <laughs> like I'm doing everything. Y'all got me doing what an NCO should do. And I don't have chevrons on my tip. Yeah. <laughs> like make it make sense. So it, mm-mm. I was more happier of my entry into the military life versus my exit right out. So Hutch was Hutch pretty much. Yeah, that's what she said. She, her, she nailed it. Her exit was, you know. All right. So we talked about the upbringing, enlisting, HBCUs. Let's talk <laughs> about now. DD two fourteen is in your hand. What is Miss Short thinking? What next? You know, um, at that point, I hadn't left Germany yet. Um, okay, so I was giving up. Yeah, you know, I was still there, and I'm like, okay, check this out. Son. You are about to be out. What are you about to go do? Mm-hmm. Do you go back home? Mm-hmm. Do you go back to Nashville? Mm-hmm. What is something about to do? Right. Okay. I said, let's get this together. You got enough sense. You're from the crib. You're from Detroit. Yeah. You're going to figure out something. Got gotcha. And it's okay. Let me hop on the internet. Let me do some job searching. Let me see what's popping off at home. Let me see what's popping off in Nashville. Okay. Mm-hmm. Verizon. I said, okay, let me apply. Boop. I literally had my interview with Verizon while I was still in Germany. Nice. So I'm talking about throwing a shirt real quick. It was a Skype <laughs> interview. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, real quick, you know, I was like, I was like hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, well, are you stateside? I said, no, I'm still in Germany, but however, I will be back stateside, yada, yada, yada. Right. So, fast forward to getting hired with Verizon, mm-hmm. shipping all my stuff back home to Detroit. Okay. And then, actually, no, I shipped all my stuff to Nashville. I went okay. back home to Detroit first. Um, I was like, hey, I got a job in line. I got to be down to Nashville, X, Y, and Z. So, it was literally almost two weeks I was home before I made my way down to Nashville right. um, in June of mm-hmm. 2014. So literally April, yeah, April 14th, I was out. I was home pretty much all of May, mm-hmm. about a month. And then June, Nashville, mm-hmm. job already lined up. I said, you know, mom, dad, here's what I got lined up. I'm on my way home. Right. I was like, please, I'm, I'm good. At that point, I knew my brain had to turn off from being military yeah. to being civilian. Back to civilian. So okay, so you're gonna be all right. Yeah. So that's how I ended up back in Nashville from twenty fourteen to twenty twenty. Okay. Mm-hmm. There six years. And, yeah. Was down there for a good minute because I knew I would be okay going back to Nashville. I knew I'd be okay staying back home. But I said, you know what? If I can land me something and get it lined up before I get on this plane, I'm, I'm Gucci. And I just, you know, one thing I say about everything that was still in us, y'all taught us to do what we need to do. Focus. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I still give the Future Soldier Program head really much respect. And I think that's a big part of what drove me to still be determined mm-hmm. while I was in there, but also drove me to be like, you know what, it ain't the end of the world. I know you didn't finish your four years, but you got two in. Yeah. On to the next, on to the next chapter. And I was you, good with it. You part of that one percent that raised their right hand. You know what I mean? And that's something it's something to be said about that. Correct. You know what I mean? It's something to be said about that. So your uh, exit was, from the army wasn't mm-hmm. as as beautiful as it should have been, for the nah. most part. Now, you was in Nashville 2014, 2020. Mm-hmm. Let's let's talk about between 20, 2020 and currently. What, what are we doing? Ooh, okay. So 2020, I ended up leaving Verizon because they made some changes. I do miss it. I ended up at T-Mobile for a little bit. Okay. Um, so fast forward to me becoming an auntie. My younger brother has a daughter. Okay. Congrats, and congrats. Uh, absolutely. She whew, energized her bunny. <laughs> and uh, she is. She's five going on 20, literally. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> just started kindergarten, so you already know how that goes. Yeah, yeah. Um. So my brother is over here in Cali. 
Because I okay. actually stopped to see him before I went to Germany. So gotcha. I said, you know what? Charlie's where I want to be at. It's cool. It's pleasant. It's mellow. I'm going to yeah. be here eventually. I don't know how I'm going to get here, but I'm going to get here. Yeah. So um, February 7th, 2020, he calls me up. Hey, um, how quickly can you get over here? Because at that point, he was going through a lot. Right. Whole nother story. I thought, okay, what's going on? Boy, thanks, please. Did you talk to mom and dad? Okay. Packed up my life. Got it up. <laughs> Packed it all up. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I left Nashville February 27th. Mm-hmm. Um, and literally shipped all my stuff, shipped my car. Um, great thing is a lot of my stuff was already packed up from Germany, so that was perfect. Right. So, um, got over here to San Diego, and I've been here since February, yeah, end of February 2020, so almost three years. Yeah. Um, you know, just reestablished myself, getting grounded, driver's license, you know, just trying to get reacclimated, like, okay, I'm in a whole nother state now. All right, cool. Yeah. Finding a job, COVID hit, you know, that that, that made the job market tough. I'm like, man, what am I about to do? Right. <laughs> like, it's crazy. So I ended up with a job in the, in the call center, so back to customer service. Mm-hmm. Worked for Amazon for a little bit, and so I ended up hurting my toe. Mm-hmm. to getting the bunion reconstruction correction surgery on my right foot. Mm-hmm. So that was April 13th of this year. Okay. I finally convinced my parents. I was like, look, this pain is ridiculous. I need to get my foot fixed. I cannot walk anymore. Like, it's bad. Right. So that ended up having two sections of my bone cut, two screws in my bone. So if you think of somebody having a broken foot, bad, yeah. 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 So... That Very has been an ongoing that. <laughs> process. Living, living through it. And yeah, so you can attest the, the little sharp, little twitchy pains you yep. get and yep. the numbness and tingling. Yeah, it, it is. It has been tough, but I said, you know what? I've been through worse pain than this. Yeah. We're going we gonna, to we gonna make it do what it do. Yep. Um, so I ended up enrolling in Purdue University Global Online because I wanted to go to school directly, okay. but COVID. Nick saw yeah. that. Okay, what am I about to do here? Right. Cali is tech, tech and health. Okay, so I'm going to figure something out. Figure something out. You got your GI stuff that's available. Yep. Go use it. Yep. So, and whoever is out the military, hey, you got your GI post on 11, go use it. If you decide not to use it, transfer it to your kids. There you go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so, that has helped me through school, honestly. And I have officially done as of, well, yesterday, last night. Um, doing my medical billing and coding certification. Sweet. So Sweet. that was a challenge. Yes, appreciate it, appreciate it. Graduation next month, so I'm really just about to be like, <laughs> That's so, it, man. Uh, it is, and I haven't decided if I'm going to, because I have 15 months left. So um, she was like, you pretty much have enough for about a year, a little over a year and a half, give or take a few. So I said, okay, so let me, let's think about this. You got this one cert. Yep. And you know, for those who know me, you know I me, mean? I want to make myself marketable. You have to. And um, I said, okay, let's go get another cert. But let's time this cert right because now you're done with school, you need a job. Yep. So don't don't pile back your plate on again. Get out of school, get your mind cleared, go take your certification test you need for the job, and then get yourself level back out. And yep. then if you want to go back to school, you know you got 16 months there. The great thing is about it, um, it doesn't expire. There that you was go. perfect. There you go. Um, I said, are you sure? She's like, no, you got 16 months. It doesn't expire. Okay. And the good part about that, once I use it up, that's money back in my pocket because I switched yeah. my GI bill to post on Lutton. So I was like, okay, yep. sweet. Perfect. That's even better. Yep. So just got a job through Sedgwick. I'm not sure if everybody knows that, but they're work with comp companies. Okay. Um, and I just did an interview ironically yesterday and he called me that afternoon. Was like, Hey, we want to extend you a job offer. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, I was like, okay, I got to find something. And I will say the one thing I was already hunger driven before I got into the military. Mm-hmm. But the military just enhanced it. Yeah. Even more. Like, you know what? Forget these stopping blocks. Go do what you gotta do. Figure yeah. it out. How um, do so how do 
how do we negotiate this obstacle? Because at the end of the day, no matter what your goal is in life, mm -hmm. life will smack you in the face. There is Man. always an obstacle. <laughs> so how do I either I go through it, I go on top of it, go around it, mm -hmm. but I have to negotiate this ob obstacle. And just listen to everything that you're saying. Going to the military, discharged. Now you're like, okay, what do I do? I'm in a foreign country. What do I do now? Oh, Verizon. Hey, you called me. Interview. Now you go to Nashville. You working. COVID happened. Life happens. You yep. migrate to San Diego. Your brother was there. Life happens. Now you got your search. You got a job offer. Think about what you've done <laughs> since you got out the dag home military. Where I mean, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people would have succumbed to it and said, well, you know, life has kicked me. I'm done. I'm moving back home with mom and dad. But you said, no, I'm going to, I need to figure this out. I have to Correct. figure it out. So that's kudos to you. That's kudos. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. They, my parents know, like, they are pretty much, they are educational driven, job yeah. driven. But, you know, they would always tell me, you know what to do. You're smart. You're not stupid. Yeah. You know what to do. Go figure out a plan. You can always call us for advice, but you don't have to always call us for advice. Yeah. You are grown up to make your own decisions. Yes. And honestly, still to this day, I was, hey, mom, dad, I got a job interview. I was like, sweet, you know what I'm saying? Yada, yada, yada. I still call them and, hey, I got the job offer. Yeah. Um, hey, 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 yeah, they were asking, how's school going? So I still keep that parent adult daughter relationship. Yeah. <laughs> I, and you know, you ain't got to say, tell your parents everything. Well, you know, sometimes you just need that extra. Ugh. Yeah. Sometimes you need that, that verbal reinforcement. Correct. So it has definitely been, you know, 2012 to 2022. Man, <laughs> it, it, it is, it has been a roller coaster, and I, I miss certain things out of, you know, certain, you know, I miss, I miss that army mentality. But I will say though, there are some f things that I don't uh, that were hard to adjust. Is being up 24 hours. That was hard. When you come out, you're programmed. You know, it's kind of like crap. Yeah. How do I unprogram my brain from trying to hurry up and do stuff and be on time? Everyone's like, well, why are you so early? No, sir. <laughs> being early is on time. Being on time is late. Correct. No, sir. Yeah. I'm so used to it. Sorry. Like, I'm, I yeah. don't like being coming in at one minute before I have to clock in. Can't stand I, it. Don't like it. I can't stand it. I'm going to so, sit right here and give myself 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And I, I tell you, I, I tell folks even when I retire, those are some of the things, those are life lessons. Those are qualities. Those are things that you do in life. If your appointment's at 1300, 1 o'clock, I'm not showing up at 1305. No. That part. I'm there half hour, even if I'm just there sitting in the freaking parking lot. That part. I'm I'm there. Correct. I'm, I'm not trying to figure out the, the idiots in traffic. Yeah. I'm there. <laughs> you oh, know no, what I mean? No. Yeah. I have to, yeah, I have to I have to play Mario and Dreddy on the traffic here. You know, you know, yeah, okay. So just touch on real quick because I want to get to um some uh, another army question before we close it. What is yeah. life like in San Diego, California currently? Wow. Okay. So being from the Midwest, yeah, spending a good portion of your life in the South mm -hmm. and coming over to the coast is yeah. a completely different entity. Yep. Um, Cali is different because one, you're right here by the border. Yeah. Um, you get a, a copious amount of different foods. Yeah. Um, they speak Spanish, which I don't speak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the vibe is, it's different. I can't really put a word on it, but mm -hmm. it is, it's a different vibe and everybody's not friendly. So whereas in we in the home, Hey, how you doing? Hey, come on down the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. No, nah, yeah. it's a different feel here. Um, it's, it, well, it's not like, in, you know, when you're in the South, Hey, you know, let's go cook. Mm -hmm. No, nah. um, <laughs> it, it just be, just being. Real talk, yeah. and it's expensive here, and you really have to hustle and bustle. And if you don't have a really good paying job, I'm not talking like 50000 60000 I'm talking about over that hump, you're going to be in trouble. I won't say you're going to be in trouble. It's going to be hard. 
the quality of life you know, is diminished. Correct. And the cost of living is astronomical. Yeah. And um, groceries, too. I found that yeah. out, too. I'm like, man, um, can I just... Okay, I'm just going to eat water because this is crazy. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, too. Like, I was like, this man, like, I paid twenty seven my dollars to fill up my car. I'm over here hitting thirty and forty dollar mark. Like, what, what, what? Yeah, register in my car, two hundred some my dollars. Um, I paid yeah. hundred some my dollars back in Nashville. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, it I haven't officially ventured out to see all of Cali yet. So, right. yeah, COVID. Yeah. Um, me at school, uh, just a lot of things have fallen into where I haven't gotten able to really enjoy Cal yet. Right. Now that school is over with, I'm like, okay, let's play. You really need to go out and do you. Yeah. Go enjoy Cal. You, yeah. you really do. So it is different. I love the food. I love being, you know, all of what, maybe 10 minutes away from the ocean. There you so go. So that's perfect. I can go to the ocean at any time. Sea World is literally like 10 minutes away. Yep. Um, so every night I get a good fireworks show out my window. So it's there perfect. You go. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is it, it, it's it's different. I just you ask for if anybody wants to come to Cali, I would say come with a pocketbook because you're gonna need some money. You definitely um, will. Definitely. You will. need some coins. You need some yeah. coins. Um, have an itinerary where you want to go. Like, yeah. don't just come over here and be like, hey, well, what are we about to do? Search this stuff out. So. Yeah. Now that we got a job in place, now I got to find a crib. So that's the next on the agenda. Yeah. Like, where am I about to live at? Yeah. What can I afford to yeah. keep a roof over my head? So, yeah. what oh, I by the way, it, Oh, by the way, you still got to eat. Still got to have clothes. Never. Still got to have never. gas. Yeah, all that stuff. we got to stay on. So, yeah, now it's yeah. like, all right, crap. Let me, how do I make this work? Okay, let's get the paychecks rolling. Let's see what yeah. your paychecks look like. Yeah. Then from there, you can kind of gauge on where yeah. you can live at. At the moment, I have no clue. Yeah. So, um, do I miss my peeps in Nashville? Absolutely. Do I miss my friends and family in Detroit and crib? Yes. Absolutely. Because I don't have any really a whole lot of friends here. Like I have like maybe that many yeah. friends. Yeah. Because I don't trust my trust guard is up right now. So I'm like, yeah. okay, it's weird to me. Yeah. So I know eventually I'm gonna loosen up and oh yeah, you loosen will. Up and to get to know some people, but right now. I will tell you, and I want to just touch on two points related to this. California, we were stationed in Fort Irwin, California, 05 to 07. Uh, and I'll tell you, we was in, because Fort Irwin is like near Barstow. And Barstow oh, you was, were Yeah, Barstow was like a conversation I never, ever want to have again. So <laughs> I remember leaving Fort Irwin, and those that's been stationed out there, you leave the main gate. It takes you. 30 miles to get to Barstow and Barstow is like a city of COVID before COVID. So you drive through that. Then you go through freaking Victorville. Victorville's okay. Then you go through freaking Ontario. Then you hit Rancho Cucamonga. Munga. Then you hit LA. And I'm getting to the point where I remember we went to San Diego for um, SeaWorld and all that. I thought San Diego was great. It was fun. I remember me and my wife at the time, uh, when we were in the Marine Corps together, we drove from Arizona to San Diego, and we was in the Chevy S10, trying to navigate a stick shift in the, on them hills. We yeah, like, oh. yeah, I was like, oh, we should never do this. <laughs> but when we went back there, when we were stationed in the Army, I was it was great. It was right on the beach. It was like freaking 72 mm -hmm. degrees outside. Yep. Freaking lovely. Another thing I want to touch on, I know you probably like, dang, is this my interview or yours? I'm not even Nah, nah, nah. It, um, it's, it's, I'm on here with it. When you, talk, you when you talked about family, and I've talked a bit about this on previous episodes, I am one of those guys, you know, and probably to my fault, I never like to ask for help. Can you, I need, do you have? I was never one of those guys. And I definitely applaud you for the fact that from Detroit, safe haven, mom and dad, Nashville, safe haven, friends, but you're sticking your neck out in San Diego, you said you have no, your brother, but I'm talking about like friends or anything. There's no friends out, but you're still trying to navigate through life. To me, that right. is a beautiful thing to do because I think, and I'm no philosopher, I'm no, you know, uh, <laughs> Nostradamus, but I, I, I firmly believe when people are by themselves, 
they end up growing. Because I say this all the time, Detroit raised me well, but I didn't grow until I left. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I see being a, a, a Detroiter as well, it's like a mirror image, seeing you you out there, you, you're trying to figure life out while you're handling your business. You got a plan, you implementing strategy measures to ensure your quality of life is good to go. That's adulting. You're doing it. It is. It is a lot. Like people say, I don't want to adult today. That statement still says in my head sometimes, like, I don't want to adult today. But reality is, yeah, I got to get up. Yeah. You know, like, it's terrible. I don't want to do my homework. So you at the end of the tunnel, this is your last class. I know yeah. you're tired. Go do your homework. Yeah. Do a little bit. You got to stop. Go do your homework. Okay. Yeah. We need to go take a break. Go to the house. Go do your homework. But for me, I've always been that. You know, like my mom would say, like, you always know what to do. You're smart. You always have a plan. Right. Now, it may not go the way you want, yeah. I, like, like it has been here a couple of times, but, you know, at the end of the day, okay, reset. Let me figure this out. Yeah. What do I need to do to get where I originally wanted to go? Because where I wanted to go, the route I wanted to go didn't work. All right, cool. Yep. Lost my job June 1st. Okay. Still fighting with unemployment right now. All right. Yeah. I got to make money. A little money I got work. Yep. But reality is, I need a job. That's the first thing on the list. That's yeah. the one thing my dad kept saying. Gotta find a job. Okay, dad, I got it. I know. That's, I'm going to do what I got to do. Yeah. I'm going to find a job. I don't care where it is. Yeah. I mean, I do care, but I know I need a job. So, yeah. and I was also flexible in leaving Cali. So I said, okay, I got to do something because this right here, this situation that's on my plate, it, 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 mm -mm, it's not mixing. <laughs> it's not going right. I'm about to yep. school. I don't have a job. I had to find a place to live. Nah. We, we need to figure out something. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Indeed, I'm just hitting apply, 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 yeah. apply. Yeah. Don't And that's one thing that, I, you know, like you said, being from Mexico, we, we, we grew some tough skin. We, we really did. Our parents growing up, you have some tough skin. And then the parents, you know, our parents are about doing what you need to do out yeah. here in the work world, out yeah. here in life. Yep. Because, yeah, I know I can come back home. Like you said, safe haven. That's yeah. always going to be there. Yeah. I'm not going to go anywhere. Yeah. But in the same token, I got to be an adult. Yeah. I can't be like, well, mom, dad, mm, 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 mm. no. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, you know, now it's like, what the fuck you got to do now? Okay. Done with school. You got a job. Starts in the middle of August. Yep. Okay. Next on the plate, you got to go take your certifications that you want that go with your coding certificate to get you the job that you want. All right, let's get that going. So I'm pe I'm pulling together, or should I say, I'm digesting my plan of action piece by piece. That's but I know I gotta <laughs> take it one step at a time. That is it. And yeah. right before yeah. we right before we close it out, what you're doing right now, developing your plan of action piece by piece. Mm -hmm. You know the old saying goes, the best way to eat an elephant is piece <laughs> by piece. Wow. And that's what yep. you're doing. So I definitely applaud you on that. Yeah. So I want to I want to close it out. I want to close out with a couple questions. You already <laughs> talked about it, but I want to kind of elaborate it. What are what is what surprised you about the army and what disappointed you about the army? Mm. Uh, you know what? What surprised me about the army is I made it through. That's what surprised me the most. Um, the support really surprised me, but the the expectations were there. I know y'all gave us a lot of like, hey, here's what you can expect. I, mean, I know you didn't want to give us all the meat potatoes right. going in, but just, so I surprised myself. That's good. If that makes sense. Yeah, it, it makes you know, I really, sense. I was just like, okay, you know what? You gonna do this. You just yeah. sit and go like this just for giggles. You know, you 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 <laughs> you, you, you came to do what you needed to do. Yeah. And pain and all, you know, it's telling you, get it together. This is you. You're a Taurus. Yeah. You're from the crib. Yeah. You tough. You've grown up between two brothers. Yeah. Go do what you gotta do. Yep. And me making it through tears, sweat, pain, busted up. Yeah. All of it. I surprised myself. But okay. also, I think the other thing that I was happy, but I was nervous, is learning how to operate this big, huge construction equipment. That right there, I'm like, oh, God, what am I? Okay, you know, it's funny. Okay, 
Okay, go ahead and do it. Yeah. What I you said the other word what I didn't like or what was your what disappointed you? You know, I not staying the full four years. But it's okay. Things I've come to believe going through trials and tribulations I went through from 19 all the way up to now, things happen for a reason. Yeah. And it sucked that I cried. Yeah, absolutely. Because I knew I went through trials and tribulations to get there. Right. But you know what? Another door closes, another one gonna open up. That's it. That is it. And right there. you know, like I told the uh, the interview or interviewer that I had yesterday, uh-huh. I said, you know what? I'm a vet. I've earned it, and nobody's gonna take that away from me. You can't. You can't take it away. Can't. You, that's a title that you earned. Mm-hmm. Well, so and I and that's 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 me. <laughs> that's it. So, yeah, I would tell you. Much. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, you know, coming on doing this interview again, like I told uh, Jazz and the other first sergeants that I already interviewed. A lot of stuff I already knew, but you know, for public assumption, I think it's great because yeah. you never know what eyes and ears is going to listen to this once I, you know, put it up and everything. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> so I know you're having the podcast. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> I'm trying to do something, you know. I'm trying to do. A I mean, something. you know, with the with the Jays and you know the pick on the, you know, I'm playing. I'm like, oh, okay, then that's what we do. That's what we do. Got it. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. So I definitely appreciate you coming on, spending a little time here on the Nomad Cast oh. again. One of probably, I think you are the very first future soldier that I had that I met after we made the transition from the other staff sergeant. He was like, hey, I'm sawing you short. I'm shipping this date. And you are, I'm like, freaking staff Sergeant Anderson. That's who the f- <laughs> I, 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 the artist formerly known as Staff Sergeant Yeah, <laughs> man. Sergeant. <laughs> but I definitely appreciate you. Like I told Jazz, you was one of the ones that was definitely supportive. You was the guys oh, and yeah. gals that I leaned on to get the other future soldiers straight. And all I was doing, trying to empower you guys to be the leaders that you became. So definitely and appreciate it. And it wasn't a handful of us. Absolutely. Yeah. That really honestly, I, I know we started out with a thick, heavy van of soldiers, and it just dwindled. That yeah. Happened. And, and a lot like, of those guys and gals, they didn't attend feature soldier training. I'm like, it's optional. But it will probably behoove you to <laughs> attend. It helped. Honestly, it helps. I would say anybody who decides to do the program. Do it because you get like a pre 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 taste. Yeah. Of you do. the PT part. You get a pre taste of working together. That's it. And if you don't do it, I mean, I'm going to say, like you said, you don't have to do it, but for me, it sets the tone of what I'm about to embark into. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. And uh, it was good. You know, do I want to do good. it again? Yeah, I'll go back to basic training, but not for it, still Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, man, we had so many heat casualties. No. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. They had well, to cancel our FTX. I believe it. I believe it. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for hanging out with me to, to lean yeah. forward and then Fox yeah. and continue to fight. I'll hold it. Love clerks. Love clerks. Right. We'll do. We'll do. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.